1854, Manassas Junction, Virginia. 40-year-old grocer Wilmer McLean hits the single guy without money lottery when he marries wealthy widow Virginia Mason. He then moves into her small plantation called Yorkshire and takes his place amongst the southern aristocracy, all the while taking in the picturesque beauty of a small stream running through the center of the property called Bull Run. Seven years later, in July of 1861, this little body of water became infamous as the site of the first major battle in the American Civil War. Fun fact, you may hear this battle go by two names. First Manassas or Bull Run. This is because the Union often named battles after bodies of water or natural features nearby. Confederate forces, on the other hand, often name them after towns or man-made objects. Hence, the Battle of Shiloh slash Pittsburgh Landing, the Battle of Antietam slash Sharpsburg, or the Battle of Gaines Mill slash Chickahominy River. Anyways, when Confederate General Pierre Gustave Toutant Beauregard, aka the notorious PGTB, commandeered the McLean home for his headquarters, McLean gladly obliged. A slaveholder and a Southern sympathizer, McLean was also a retired major in the Virginia militia. So if the Confederates needed a place to prepare for the approaching Yankees, his plantation was the place to do it. It's not known if he thought he'd be able to move back in after whatever engagement occurred in the area, but the battle all but destroyed the property. Nevertheless, he stayed there until August 1862, when Second Manassas, or Bull Run, took place. At this point, he basically marked Cuban that sh moving his family 120 miles to the southwest to a sleepy little hamlet called Appomattox Courthouse. Surely there, the war would not find him. Until it did, in April 1865, when Confederate Colonel Charles Marshall rode into town looking for a home in which to broker peace talks between Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant. Of course, the first person he spotted was Wilmer McLean, who attempted to point Marshall in the direction of someone else's house, except it was too run down for such a historic meeting. So, this time, he reluctantly offered up his own finely furnished home. It was just a meeting, so what's the worst that could happen? Well, once Lee and Grant finished their chat, subsequently ending the bloodiest war in American history, all the soldiers inside and in the area tore McLean's house apart, taking pieces of furniture and any other souvenirs they could find from this now historic location. In the end, they all but destroyed the property, forcing McLean to put it up for sale a year later. When no one offered to buy it, he moved back to Yorkshire, defaulted on the Surrender House, and put it up for auction in 1869. But all was not lost. The one thing he did gain from the conflict was something only he could boast about for the rest of eternity. The war began in my front yard, he'd tell people, and ended in my front parlor. What's your favorite Civil War story? Let us know in the comments, and be sure to check out Raider Red's YouTube channel for more Strange Heartland history. I'm Christopher Pilney.